Hey, this is Kushiar. I'm going to talk about Cardano today. Uh, I'm a data scientist and entrepreneur since 2011 in Silicon Valley, and I also have some peer-reviewed research papers in cryptography and, uh, and computational complexity. So today I'm going to talk about a few things. First of all, we are going to talk about what Cardano has done so far. Uh, what are their accomplishments? Second, we're going to go to their roadmap and what's their technology roadmap for next few years. We are talking about the risk of the project and what are the cons of the Cardano project. And last, we are going to talk about the market, the finance, and if this is a good investment as a coin. Okay, let's start talking about what Cardano team has accomplished so far. The number one <coughs> accomplishment so far is publishing the first provably secure proof of a stake protocol. So what does that mean? So basically, uh, until now, we have two major solutions for the blockchain technology. We have two major solutions for validating transactions. Number one, which was proposed in the original Bitcoin paper, it's called proof of work. Proof of work is the, the way proof of work is you have this uh, hard computational problem, this hash, this one way uh, hash function that you get a lot of uh, people called miner to fight over solving this problem. And whoever uh, solves the problem first gets the reward and gets to validate the transaction. The second solution which Cardano use is a proof of a stake. Proof of a stake doesn't have any miner. You vote by your, by your stake in the protocol. The more coins you have, the more votes you have. So because of that, because there is no race for hash for solving this back uh, this one way hash function, there is no waste of computation and there is no waste of energy. And if you follow the blockchain, you know that's one of the most major criticism of uh, blockchain technology because it just wastes too much computation and too much energy. So that's a huge deal by itself. But it's also a huge deal that how they went for solving this problem. If you look at the cryptocurrency market today, most of the cryptocurrencies, I could say almost all of them, they create a website and they publish a PDF uh, protocol on their website and they say okay this is secure and the reason it's secure because it's secure against this attack and this attack and that's not how you prove security because we just don't know all the attacks and then when you say okay this is not the right fit they answer that if you think this is not secure go and hack it and make hundreds of millions of dollars that's not that's not provable security. In provable security, you have to define a computational model, you have to define adversarial model, you have to define a probability distribution, and you have to prove that attacking this cryptography schema is as hard as solving this computational complexity problem based on this probability distribution and based on this model. And because we, don't, we have no way of solving that problem in a uh, in a timely manner this protocol is secure that's how you should prove it and i think at this point cardano is the only project that is doing that they're writing their papers in a scientific mathematical way they published their papers in crypto 2017 crypto is the number one most prestigious conference in cryptography and they're planning to publish two more papers in upcoming crypto uh sorry eurocrypt which is uh, which is a very prestigious cryptography conference in europe so this is a huge edge they are not they're very different from all the cryptocurrencies they're going at it in a very scientific rigorous uh, way okay let's talk about cardano roadmap Cardano roadmap to me is the most ambitious and biggest roadmap among all the cryptocurrency uh, 
projects. So they are they start their roadmap by classifying all the problems that we have today with blockchain and cryptocurrencies. They classify all the problems into three main categories: sustainability, scalability, and interoperability. I think the first two are more of problems, the last one is more of a, a new feature or a new generation of cryptocurrency. So let's talk about each of them. Sustainability and governance. So today the, the biggest cryptocurrency by market cap is Bitcoin and it's the first cryptocurrency. And if you look at the Bitcoin, Bitcoin has a serious problem. For the last couple of years, the Bitcoin, there are different development teams that are working on Bitcoin project and they cannot agree on anything. There are different suggestions. There's SegWit, there's SegWit 2X, there is Lightning, there are like all sorts of solutions to scale and speed up the Bitcoin protocol and transactions. But none of them have been implemented and went through so far. So the only thing that went through was the Bitcoin cash, they basically doubled the blockchain. And that came with a huge backlash from the Bitcoin core team. And it caused a huge damage to the brand. Now you have Bitcoin and you have Bitcoin cash. And most of the uh, average consumers, they're very confused about which one is which. So this shows that the governance in a cryptocurrency is a huge issue. And this is not a solved problem. So this is the number one problem that they're going after. How to fix the governance of a crypto? We have the same problem with Ethereum. There was a fight between Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, and this happens all the time. We need to have a long-term solution of how to, how to manage this fight and how to make sure the brands stay the same as it is. And also we can grow the, we can grow the development team. We can push new projects and we can make it better over time. So the fact that they are proof of a stake, it already makes it easier to manage the governance problem. Because if you look at Bitcoin, one of the biggest problems with Bitcoin, I mean there are problems that are solvable and then I think there is one problem that is not solvable. The problem that is not solvable is the fight between miners and stakeholders. So you have miners that they care about transact, they want to uh, collect more transaction fees and they don't mind centralization. And then you have stakeholders that they hate centralization and they hate transaction fees. So their incentives are not necessarily aligned. So when you have proof of the stake like Cardano, you don't have that problem. Everything is at least on the same boat. In okay, the, uh, another concept Cardano is working on is a concept of treasury. So if we, if we look at the uh, cryptocurrency market today, it's it's very it's not very clear how you can finance the project and how you can take care of the developers over time. So the usual way is the coin comes up at ERC twenty or any other type of coin comes up and they ICO and they sell a bunch of coins and they raise some money but the question is how to make this sustainable how you can take care of this operation over time Cardano team is working on a concept called treasury that can pay off your development uh, expenses over time so this is pretty cool okay let's talk about scalability scalability to me is absolute number one that blockchain industry is facing today. If, if blockchain wants to go mainstream and wants to be really applicable, the, tr the number of transactions per second that this coin is doing today, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and any other project, this is a joke, right? If you look at Visa, Visa handles more than 24,000 transactions per second. If so, but how many transactions Bitcoin or Ethereum network can handle per second? A few, maybe 5 to 20 based on how you look at it. So this is a huge challenge. Okay, so how does Cardano address this problem? So first of all, the fact that Cardano is a proof of a stake protocol makes it easier. First, because you don't have the uh, 
you don't have the minor fees. As far as TPS or transaction per second, Cardano solution is if Cardano solution is you can have communities. When, when you have a, a POS or proof of stake, you don't vote with your mining power. There is no race for solving a one-way hash function. The way it works is you vote for your stake in the protocol. And when you have that, you can have different committees. You can have as many committees as you want. And each committee votes and validate certain pool of transactions. So why this is good for scalability? The thing is, as you add more nodes, as you have more users, and as your users create more accounts, you can add more committees and you can validate more transactions. So that's the solution they're working on. I think uh, they are going to publish another paper like Ouroboros about the provable committee model. That's I think is going to be a huge deal for the scalability of blocks. So let's talk about interoperability. What is interoperability? Interoperability means we have different coins, different cryptocurrencies, different blockchains. And assuming none of these cryptocurrencies can dominate the entire market, we want these cryptocurrencies to be able, we want these blockchains to be able to talk and communicate to each other. Because if we have a DAP, that like ideally this NAP, this DAP needs to at least be able to read other blockchains because that just adds a lot of functionalities to your app. Let's say you want to have a kitty app that knows how much Bitcoin you have, and maybe you can use your Bitcoins as a collateral to buy more kitty, whatever, right? So there are all sort of applications. So we need this uh, blockchains to be able to communicate to, this, uh, to each other. And that comes under interoperability. Not only we need uh, all the blockchains to talk to each other, but Cardano addresses is we need the blockchains to talk to a legacy system. We, we, need, we need the blockchain to talk to banks. We need Cardano, uh, we need a blockchain to talk to government. If we want to, if we want this to become mainstream, we need people to be able to use the blockchain to do their everyday things and everyday things are in banks and governance and we need these two to talk to each other. So that's it. Uh, as far as the team, Cardano has one of the most impressive teams among uh, cryptocurrencies. So at this point, Charles Hoskinson is the person who's leading this project and he was one of the co-founders of Ethereum project and he knows what's going on in this industry for a while. He's a mathematician and a scientist. And they have all sort of scientists from different countries that is working on this project. It's a very impressive team. Uh, let's, let's talk about what are the issues and what I think are the main risks with this project. I think the number one risk uh, with Cardano project is it's a huge a complex problem. So they're trying to solve everything at this point. They're trying to solve sustainability, scalability, and interoperability, which each of these problems is a huge, huge computer science problem. And it's a it's a very ambitious and big goal, but obviously when you have such an ambitious and complex roadmap, it comes with risk. So this could be a good or bad thing for the project. The second thing, which is probably the only thing that I didn't like about this project is their choice of programming language. I've been a programmer. I have a. Pro I've been a programmer since high school, and I have programmed in almost every language, from front end, back end, Java, JavaScript, Python, PHP, Swift, C plus plus, everything, and I had never heard of this programming language. It's called Haskell. And so they wrote the Cardano code on Haskell and the programming language that they introduced is someone is something similar to Haskell. I looked at the syntax and it wasn't 
nothing like any other programming language that I've seen before. So this could be a risk because most of the programmers want to code in something that they're familiar with. And I'm not sure how many people know this programming language. And yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's a big risk because Cardano at this point, they're fighting directly with Ethereum. And if Ethereum is growing like crazy and everybody started like learning Solidity, everybody started being, uh, just learning about the Ethereum blockchain stacks. And if they want to compete, I think they need something that programmers feel familiar with. So that's about it, about the risk of this project. Uh, let's talk about finance of the coin, uh, if this is a good investment. First of all, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not giving any finance ad financial advice. You need to make the decision for yourself. This is how I look at this coin for myself. I look at Cardano, or if you look at it, if you look for it on exchanges, it's under ADA, ADA. And the market cap is $20 billion. Today is January 9th, 2018. The market cap is around $20 billion. I'm looking at Ethereum, the market cap is $120 billion. Bitcoin is $240 billion. The question is, if Cardano is as one-six valuable as Ethereum, or is it, or if it's as one twelfth value valuable as Bitcoin? My personal judgment on both question is yes and yes. With Ethereum, I think Ethereum has this edge of having a lot of developers, a huge community around it, and that's the biggest thing working for Ethereum at this point. And I think they still have the most chance of becoming the dominant coin in the market. In comparison to Bitcoin, I think this is a no-brainer that I'm paying one twelfth of price of Bitcoin for a Cardano. This makes absolutely total sense to me. And for that reason, I'm investing in Cardano. You have to make your own decision. I think the coin price is about 75 cents today. Uh, and it's it has grown more than 4,000% in three months. So it's a risky investment. But for me, this is, if they can pull this off, if they can solve sustainability, if they can solve scalability and interoperability, this could be the dominant coin. It's a huge project and they're not going for, for quarter to quarter uh, roadmap. They're going for a five to 10 years roadmap. I mean, if they can pull it off, this could be very valuable. So anyway, that was my take on Cardano. Please comment if you have any question, if you want me to research more coins for you. Thank you very much.